What's going on, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Texas Street Stories. On this episode, we're going to be talking about the time the Texas Syndicate slaughtered the Texas Mexican Mafia. Well, let's get into it. But first, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, help your boy out and hit that button. Soon after he began his work as a correction officer, Sandoval witnessed his first homicide at the Ellis unit. The details of exactly who he saw murdered were not clear, but according to homicide records, the victim was probably Cesario Gonzalez, who was killed on August 31st, 1985. Gonzalez was a Texas Mexican mafia member and was allegedly killed by members of the Texas Syndicate. Robert Draper, a journalist for the Texas for the Texas Monthly, provided an app description of this homicide scene. Help me, boss. Turning around, Sandoval saw a Hispanic inmate, Cesario, standing behind a, hall a hallway crash gate, clinging to the bars with both hands. His neck had been slashed. His head was all but severed. A long metal object, a homemade knife or a shank protruded from his juggler. I don't know, man. He was probably clean. He was probably dying right there, man. You know, st being stabbed in the neck like that. And that helped me, boss. You know, when I got locked up, man, they say they, they started calling the, the guards their boss because it was an acronym for sorry son of a bitch that's what the boss stand for i used to call him boss too you know once the old timer told me that's what it stood for you know but they took it as some kind of respect but the old timers told me that it was it really stood for sorry son of a bitch the assailant was nowhere in sight after this incident Sandoval soon realized it was the inmates who ran the prison, not the guards, and surely not the state of Texas. The Gonzalez homicide was merely one representation, example of the larger problem of violence steaming from the war between the Texas Syndicate and the Texas Mexican Mafia. So these guys have been going to war for, you know, for a long time. That raged inside the walls of the prison units. These prison gang related homicides from the, the war between the Texas Syndicate and the Texas Mexican Mafia were not only happening in the Ellis unit, it stretched beyond and consumed the entirety of Texas prison units. So not, not it wasn't just at this Ellis unit, it was, you know, taking my, you know, right, I don't know how many, uni how many prison units Texas officially has right now, but I know they were up like at 150, 156 and that's a lot of that's a lot of prisons each one anywhere from 1500 to 2500 it's a lot of dudes just a few weeks before the cesario gonzalez homicides that luis sandoval witnessed arturo astro aguilar a texas mexican mafia member was murdered on August 22, 1985 in the East Ham unit by the Texas Syndicate. On September the 2nd, 1985, Raymond Delgado, a Texas Mexican Mafia member, was murdered in the Ramsey unit. So they're everywhere, man. They're kicking it off everywhere. Every, every unit, somebody, every, every unit, the Texas Syndicate is, is slaughtering them. They see them, they're slaughtering them. At every unit, just kicking it off. A week later, a well-known event called Bloody Sunday occurred on September 8th, 1985. At about 7.30 p.m. in the evening at the Darrington unit, day room in Rochera, Texas, three Texas Mexican Mafia members Lloyd Vasquez, Jose Arturo Garcia, Albert C 
Carrillo were all fatally stabbed by the Texas Syndicate members. Lee R. Castro and Rogelio Cantu, who were detained afterwards. So these two two dudes killed three dudes, so you know, but they had they had odd odd you know the they evened out the odds, you know, they had the, the heavy metal. Charles Brown, a TDCJ spokesman, said an eight inch long flat piece of metal and a bone knife were recovered at the scene, likely the murder weapons. And man, so they, they put in some heavy metal on these dudes, man. What's y'all's take on this, man? You know, uh, they've been going out of war over here in Texas for a while, uh, you know, until the thongs kicked in and, you know, they had to start picking and choosing their enemies. Uh, well, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Texas Street Stories. And like I said, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, help your boy out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Any kind of comment helps. Feedback. And negative, positive. It's all, it's all feedback. And thank you and stay tuned for the next.